Welcome to the MLB Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you riding solo from the West Coast, Josh Lander. Going ahead and looking at Tuesday, July the 25th, an M- MLB slate here with a few uh, player prop induced picks, if you will. Uh, definitely looking to fade and ride with a few pitchers today, per usual on this show. Uh, taking a look quickly back at the last show, one and two lost less than half a unit there. Um, really had four picks and one of them pushed as Texas gave up an extra couple of runs in the fifth to tie with Houston losing or pushing that bet. So that was a nil. Uh, the only bet we got right was in that Texas Houston game where we got first five over four and a half runs correct for 0.3 units. Uh, and then we did get that Pittsburgh San Diego Padres game incorrect. Uh, minus one and a half on the run line for the pods started out well up one nothing. I think I'm off the pods. I like I need a recovery group of some kind at this point for betting on the Padres, like people who need help and can't help themselves because they just see matchups for the Padres that you're like, how is this team going to lose to the Pirates? And they lost the whole thing. Not only did they not get the run line, they didn't win the first five. They lost the whole game. Uh, and I think I'm off the Padres. If you see me betting them, send help and uh, let I'm doing it against my will because they're just bad right now and I need to stop betting on them. Uh, Reminder to like and subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along, bringing you these videos each and every weekday this MLB regular season. Also want you to head to thelines.com. Check out all the great content we're putting up on the site and use that odds finder tool that we have up there for you guys. You can see a nice chart right in front of you with all the odds available to you from all these books that are giving us bets in this baseball season. So let's jump into the first game here and I'm going to the the uh, Tigers and the Angels, and I'm betting on the Tigers in this one because the pitching matchup just screams uh, that they have the advantage with Eduardo Rodriguez taking on Griffin Canning. And, like, Griffin Canning's been all right, uh, not great. His expected ERA is about 4-2-3, not bad for a young pitcher. His actual ERA is 4-5-2. And really the problem with Canning is he's just been seen really well. The batters are seeing the ball come out of his arms super easily. They're making really, really good connection with a nine and a half percent barrel rate against Griffin Canning, meaning they're just putting the barrel on the ball like consistently, like a 10th of the time is too often for that to be happening. It's led to an avid average exit velocity of his, uh, the balls hit off of him, uh, at 91 and a half miles an hour this season, which is not very good for those of you who, who don't quite understand that. Uh, if you're up above about 105, you're, you're hitting a pretty decent home run. Uh, so if you're hitting the ball inside the park at like 92 miles, an hour on average you're probably finding some some nice gaps uh with those hard hit balls and like the hard hit rate in general 45 percent of the time he's getting hit hard when it's in play so uh not great numbers for him just in terms of those sort of external numbers that the peripherals that that show why he probably has a, a slightly ballooned era at four five two um look i mean the the angels hit left handed pitching pretty well they're basically a top five team in the league when it comes to hitting lefties uh which eduardo rodriguez is uh, and in july they've been even better which is crazy because they're comp- crazy injured uh mike trout anthony rendon joe adele brandon drury max stassi and logan ohop all on the uh, il there for the angels yet they're still hitting left-handed pitching super well in july actually uh especially they're in third right now wrc plus behind only Boston and Baltimore when it comes to hitting left-handed pitching. So this is a full game bet though. And even if, if Canning pitches a little bit above his number, his projections, Rodriguez pitches a little bit below his projections. Then we're still looking at the worst bullpen in baseball for the angels coming out with a six, three, seven, uh, WRC plus that they're allowing at this point. Um, they're giving up a ton, a ton of really hard hit balls, uh, as well. And pretty much, I'm sorry, that that's their, uh, their FIP, excuse me. Their FIP is the worst on the season, uh, the fielding and independent stats that we talk about for pitchers. So regardless of how the defense is, and it's not great for it, for the angels, the pitching itself if, coming out of the bullpen is something you can feel good at relying on the tigers for. So I think Rodriguez does enough, even if canning out pitches his projections. Like I said, once he turns it over to that bullpen, feel good about the money line there for Detroit. Hope I said that at the jump. I know Jack puts that up on screen for us. Thank you, Jack. Um, minus 120 is where I got that Detroit money line. I actually forgot to check it this morning, but I would play it to about minus 135. Um, this last night is really when I got these numbers. So if, if you still see the Detroit money line at minus 135, I think it's a good bet. <clears throat> Let's move on to the second bet here. Another fun game, I think, in this series with Baltimore and Philly. And I'm actually not playing the most fun bet on this one. I'm going under nine and a half on DraftKings. That's minus 115 for 0.3 units there. I I like the under in this matchup between the two righties, between Kyle Gibson and Taiwan Walker. And honestly, like I really, I just want to start with Walker because he's been 
really, really, really good at home. Uh, and it's, just, it's interesting because he's five and one at home, six and three on the road, but all of his numbers are like just so noticeably better when he's at home versus when he's on the road. Uh, two seven six ERA at home versus five two five on the road. The five two five ERA with a six and three record shows you how well the the Phillies can just randomly start hitting uh, in in these games. Honestly, as inconsistent as it is at times, uh, they can mash, and that's helped him on the road. Um, the Woba two sixty two at home, really good. Three forty three on the road, not so good. One seventy eight batting average against when he's at home. A two seventy four batting average on the road it's crazy to me that these are all these numbers are so much higher uh his FIP and ex-FIP are pretty much the same in terms of the expected numbers for him so I think he's pretty much pitching to where he should be pitching uh the XERA is actually a little bit lower than his ERA on the season um and really what we're talking about here for the uh Orioles as awesome of an offense as they are they are just it's very stark the differences between when they hit lefties and righties those splits are very noticeable against left-handed pitching they're just way better uh frankly put and honestly against right-handed pitching this Orioles offense even though it's like a top three offense in the league it's pretty much a a middle of the road offense uh when you when you put them up against righties so against lefties they are fifth in WRC plus 13th against righties that's the most noticeable difference there uh, as the amount of runs that they create and get across the plate there at home or excuse me against lefties is just so much higher than righties the OPS is 10th in the league for uh the, the Orioles against lefties righties it's 13th and then batting average against 12th for against lefties uh and 16th against righties the the batting average for this Baltimore lineup uh, I I'd like the the under because that's what Philly tends to do at home to be honest it's really just overriding the idea that the Orioles offense is going to be unstoppable against Taiwan Walker who's a righty who's good at home um versus you know the idea that the Phillies are, are going under a lot more at home so when they are at home this season they are 23 and 17 and 5 to the under at home meaning they're going under 57 and a half percent of the time and they're going under at home when they're favored even more are the Phillies 20 12 and 4 that's a 63 percent uh, rate of going under when they're the home favorite as they are in this game with the pitching uh, with the slight pitching edge with to Taiwan Walker so uh, I'm really focused on him Gibson's been fine right around his his, his expected numbers um, the the bullpen for Baltimore is very good as well uh, so I, I'm not really trying to figure out how to take advantage of Taiwan Walker in this game I think Baltimore has too many advantages in other areas for me to feel good about the money line straight up or even a first five or anything like that for for the Phillies so I'm just going under and runs here and believing about these pitchers uh, to keep things low and and believe if that bullpen has to come in to save Kyle Gibson for the Orioles, that it's it's sixth in ERA, it's seventh in expected ERA. So I think they're going to be just fine uh, against the Phillies regardless. But uh, we'll see Taiwan Walker have a pretty nice game, I'm pretty sure. And then let's close things out here with the Subway Series, kid. We got the Mets and the Yanks. And I got to back the Mets. And I'm a Mets fan. But as a Mets fan, I'm self-loathing. I think you probably know that about, about most Mets fans. We are not optimistic uh, because we don't really ever have much reason to be. So it's not like I'm, I'm. this is a homer pick. I think I'm just backing Verlander, and, and he's someone who's frustrated me all season. So it's not, like I said, a homer pick to talk about him doing well. And this one, minus 145 on DraftKings for the Mets to win the first five. So the money line for the Mets in the first five innings, uh, m- minus 145 on DraftKings, 0.4 units. So it, it's not a ton of juice, obviously. Uh, we're not getting great return, but I think he's got a huge advantage over Domingo Herman, who honestly has also pitched pretty well, despite the fact that he's not been obviously the same pitcher he was since pitching a perfect game. Uh, but I think the the idea that, that Verlander is not going to pitch well because he's only done it at home is false, right? This game's at Yankee stadium and the the knock on Verlander is more than anything the road home splits where at home he's got a sub 270 ERA on the road he has a uh, above five ERA um, which is very very balloon but he's coming off of an eight his best game of the season without question eight innings seven K's versus the Chai Sox last uh, last week obviously the Chai Sox are not impressive but this Yankees line, lineup is awful. So I, I think it's actually worse than, than the Ch- the Chicago White Sox offense uh, over the course of basically the last three or four weeks. And really since Aaron Judge has not been in it uh, in the last, basically since July started, the Yankees are bottom 10 in OPS and slugging. They are bottom 10 in batting average, and they are bottom 10 in weighted runs created plus. Um, and Verlander, like I said, much better at home than he is on the road. But at home, he's playing in City Field, which is a very friendly park for pitchers. Uh, the ball does not travel out nearly as easily, and you can definitely uh, 
field it well, right? There's not any really weird little corners or edges in the middle of the outfield like some stadiums. So it's become a top five most friendly pitcher park, uh, has City Field. And that's a huge reason for why he's done so well, I'm sure. But at the same time, the Yankee Stadium is a couple notches behind the Met Stadium in terms of pitcher-friendly parks, which you can look up on a couple of different sites. Um, and basically, I think it's going to be a similar style of game for him with similar strategy. And it, really, he's always pitched well at this new Yankee Stadium. He's 4-1 and one there in his last five. Um, the last time he pitched there was last year. Really a small sample size outside of last year's game that he won in June for the Astros, going seven, only giving up a run and four hits. Three walk, uh, three Ks, and just one walk. So uh, I, I think you can expect a bunch of that from him again. And even those road numbers that have been bad uh, for Verlander over the course of the last, let's say, three road games, we're talking about in Atlanta, best offense in the league. In Colorado, we know what it's like to to hit, to hit and pitch there. Uh, and against the Padres, who I, I condemned at the top of this show, but still have a, a solid lineup that walks a lot, can get on base, and can get around uh, the bases to score when they need to. So Verlander's stats are a little bit off from from the last three. I think, and, and not totally representative of how well he's pitching right now, which is very, very well, especially over the course of the last four or five starts in general. So I'm taking him to, to out-duel Herman in, in the early going here. Um, Herman hasn't been as bad as his he's looked necessarily, but that's the thing about him is like one one at bat, he can just look like, dude, you're not going to touch his stuff when that curveball is working and he's placing the fastball in the right spot. Um, but that fastball and that curveball have not been working for him. That's led to the 4-4-1 ERA over his last three since the perfect game. It should be noted he's got 23 strikeouts in that time with just six walks as well. So he's a hard pitcher to nail down how he's going to do. I'm not necessarily fading him as much as I'm riding with Verlander just to be better than him in this game against an even worse Yankees lineup than the Mets lineup that's also been pretty bad. I mean, when you take out Pete Alonso, the way he's been just awful, probably due to that wrist injury. And then you look at the way that uh, Herman is inconsistent, you know, uh, and excuse me, the way that Judge is not in there for the, the Yankees in that lineup. I think it's pretty obvious why these two teams are struggling on offense and why they're both likely almost dare, definitely going to miss the playoffs here. Uh, and so I'm just taking the pitching matchup that I think is, is given the edge gives is given to the Mets in this one. So We'll look to turn things around from the one and two. We're really just one and five now in the last couple of days, but that happens. I'm feeling pretty good about tonight with some uh, pretty fun games here on the slate. So as that's all the time I have for you today, continue to follow along. Coming back to you tomorrow on Wednesday with another set of games and picks for you here on the MLB Coast to Coast show. So until I see you next, happy betting.